Welcome on back to the channel, everybody. I'd like to introduce you to my latest e-bike. This is the Awesome Tom RV3, which is a very budget-friendly bike coming in at $799. You're going to be hard-pressed to find a better quality bike for this kind of money, and I'm not joking. This is an insanely nice bike for the money. Pretty basic when it comes to specs and features, but if you're looking at getting into the e-bike, and you're not quite sure if it's for you, this is honestly the best way to do it because you will probably buy this bike, not sure if you really want to get into the e-bike scene or not, and you're probably gonna fall in love with it, and you're probably just gonna keep it. Uh, this thing is truly awesome. You got the three inch fat tires, which is typical for just about any of the electric bikes these days, but you have these baskets. You have an optional basket on the front that holds 13 kilograms. And of course you got the basket on the back, kind of this, this, uh, this shelf. And if you notice, it's got some really nice elastic straps. Take a look at these. I'm going to pull up on these. I could lift the bike with these. All right. These are, yeah, those are, <laughs> those are pretty serious elastic straps for carrying things. This bike will hold up to three, 100 pounds 300 pounds <laughs> that's 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 a lot for an e-bike guys so this thing's going to get you about 30 miles of pure throttle or around 60 miles using pedal assist on a full charge the hub motor is 350 watts and this little sucker back here this thing produces 55 newton meters of torque it has a top speed of up to 23 miles an hour. We're going to test that out ourselves here in just a little bit. This thing is the ultimate fat tire e-bike, guys. It's also, these fat tires, these are puncture resistant fat tires. That's right. So stickers and stuff, you can probably get away with running over several of them without getting a flat. It's got a headlight with a built-in reflector, which is really nice. It has a reflector on the back. I don't think this is actually a light. No, that's just a uh, just a reflector on the back. Plastic fenders. You have a seven-speed Shimano gear shifter, and you have Wuxing brakes. These are manual brakes with 160 millimeter rotors. On the back, you got a derailleur guard. This is really nice to have. You've got a Shimano derailleur and Shimano gears. Very nice freestyle movement there. Sounds really good, guys. Here's your battery. And uh, this is a 10 amp hour battery and it has a key so you can remove it. Of course, the seat's adjustable, obviously up and down and you can pull this down and adjust the seat forward and backward. You've got a power button here. The key will take the battery out. You've got a level indicator right here. You hold down this button and well, it helps if you turn the battery on. Then you push the button and you can clearly see the state of charge. Now. This is a mistake a lot of people make when they first get an e-bike if they've never had one before. A lot of bikes come with a power button that you have to activate to wake up the battery. If you do not wake up the battery, you are not going to turn on the bike. All right, so you just hold the power button down, on it comes. This is a super intuitive, very basic screen. I hate saying basic, but it is what it is. It's just a kind of a monochromatic screen. Battery level right here, miles per hour. The watts has a level indicator right here, and you have your pedal assist modes, up and down, all right? You got an up arrow and a down arrow. Pedal assist one, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, all right? And then down here, this will toggle your trip, time, and miles, just like that. It's a kind of a hidden button down there, but there it is. And aside from that, I mean, you've got your Shimano shifter, very, very simple to understand. And then there is a little button down here that if you don't know about it, could confuse you. You push this button and when you hit the throttle, it does nothing. This basically disables the throttle and leaves it to pedaling, all right? Pedal assist will still work. You can turn it from zero all the way up to five. And if you start pedaling, the, the motor will kick in and it will provide you with power based on the level of pedal assist that you have selected here. But if you turn this on, push the button in, and you hit the throttle, well, yes, you can see she's ready to take off. So that's about everything in regards to the specifications on the bike that I think you'd want to know. Obviously, you have a, uh, you have a fork lock out. It's over here. All right, so it'll lock the forks in place for a solid suspension, or you can adjust the preload on the suspension up here as well to dampen or stiffen up your riding experience. There is no suspension in the back. And I'm gonna tell you right now, 
I've, I had to ride the bike from my house here, so I put, I probably didn't put many miles on it. Um, let's scroll through. 0.14 miles. All right, I put I put a tenth of a mile on this bike, and I can already tell you it is a comfortable bike. We're going to try to put about five miles on it today. We'll check to see where the battery level's at. Obviously, it's a gloomy day, and if you take a look at me, I'm wearing a coat. That's because it is not warm. It's anything but warm. So this is going to be a really good test for this bike. Let me set the camera up, and we will get on the road. All right, are we ready to roll? Guys, I've got a GPS device attached to the bike this time. This is something new that I'm trying. So the initial torque, it's not super crazy. It's good enough to get you going, um, but we're also going up an incline. But I've got a GPS device on here that's going to show us our uh, actual miles per hour. It's going to show the route that we're taking. It's going to show elevation. There's going to be a lot of information on the screen. It's something new that I'm trying, and uh, you guys can comment below and let me know if it's something you like. Usually I have to tell you I'm going 13 miles an hour, 14, 15. I'm hoping that I don't have to do that anymore with the GPS device attached to the bike now. And the overlay on your screen should give you all the pertinent information that you could want to know about this bike. So obviously we're on loose gravel and we're cruising around 18 miles an hour right now. And, uh, you know, honestly, it's very comfortable considering this is not a full suspension bike. This is, and by the way, if you guys have seen my reviews before, this neighborhood where all these beautiful big houses are, yeah, this is where I used to ride the bike and do my off-road testing. I can't do that anymore because they built houses here instead, big houses. So yeah, that happened quick. We're gonna take this thing around and about just a little bit off-road and uh, Honestly, it rides great. It's very smooth. I mean, this is a silky smooth bike. I'm really surprised because there is no rear suspension on this and it feels really good. It handles the gravel just fine. Even though the brakes are the old school mechanical manual brakes are not hydraulic, the brakes are, I mean, they're great. They're, the brakes will, they'll get it, man. If you need to stop, they're gonna stop you. Maybe we could take it off road just a little bit over here just to kind of, see how it does in some well less favorable conditions this is sand there are stickers there's all kinds of stuff through here guys it's and it's kind of wet on top of that let's there we go you can hear that suspension putting in work <laughs> she's definitely working all right not bad not bad at all definitely a little bumpy but this is not a bike that was really designed for heavy off-road use you know what i mean we're gonna take this thing out on the street now. Nice. We're gonna see how it does. All right, let's do it. Now there's been some dogs out here lately. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they don't bother us. This thing is moving. You get it off the gravel and onto the road, man, this thing gets it. We're at 21. And I think top speed's rated around 23. I'm not doing any pedaling. We're simply using the throttle. Let me try putting some pedaling action into it. We're in seventh gear. And I'm still sitting around 19 miles an hour, 20. Now, if I really get into pedaling, yeah, here we go. And we're going downhill, so that helps. 22, almost 22. Now we'll go back to just kind of cruising. I'll use the throttle. There we go. Just crossed 23. <laughs> 24, here we go. I said I wasn't gonna do that anymore. It's hard not to, old habits, hard to break, man. All right, coming up this incline, this is where these bikes always have a real tough time because this is a steep hill. I'm gonna leave it on throttle alone. We'll see where it lands. Yeah, 15, 14, 13, <laughs> 12, 11. Yeah, uh, 11 miles an hour. Yeah, that was difficult, man. Um, now I'm six foot tall. I am. 213 pounds 
So I expected this bike was going to have a little bit of a hard time. Remember, that's a 350 watt motor in the back. But uh, even so, it still got us up the hill without me having to do any pedaling at all. We're going to take this thing on a little ride through a neighborhood. We'll see how it does. We're gonna turn around and come back and we'll figure out where the battery's at. All right, let's take it off road again. Not too shabby. Bring her back on the road. Handles it with ease. No big deal. It doesn't mind big bump. It does not mind going off road. It doesn't mind bumps. Let's hang it right here. Now that wind is really kicking over here, guys. No joke. So if there's a crazy wind noise, my apologies. Nothing I could do about it. We're riding straight into the wind. That was a pretty good bump right there. I felt that. The front suspension does its job though. It really does a good job of absorbing some of these big bumps. And maintaining 20 miles an hour isn't a problem, even for somebody my size, so. We're gonna come out of this wind here in just a second. Big bump, yep, gravel, another bump. Not a problem. And we got a sharp curve here. Let's hit the brakes a little bit. Slide around this. There we go, not too shabby. The brakes are great, they really are. I'm gonna do a little bit of pedaling. For the most part, I've just been using the throttle, which isn't the ideal way to use an e-bike. That's the lazy way of doing it. Um, but I am feeling a little lazy today, guys, so uh, I can't wait to see how the battery holds up. Doing some pedaling, not bad. When you get up to about 22 miles an hour, you'll realize that you're kind of running out of pedal. You know what I mean? It feels like you're kind of ghost pedaling. Uh, you're not really doing anything. But even so, you're still getting some exercise, still getting some cardio going. You got your legs working. But like I said, today I'm just lazy. Bumps, not bad at all. Yeah, today I'm just feeling a little lazy. Been pretty heavy on the throttle. A lot of bumps over here. This is a rough area. But the bike handles it just fine. Not a problem at all. For $799, guys, I really don't think you're gonna find a better bike than this uh, to get you into the e-bike arena. If that's something you're looking to do. If you're thinking about it, you just haven't been able to make a decision yet, hopefully this helps because this is a wonderful little bike. Three inch fat tires, handles the road well, whether you're off-road, on-road, gravel, dirt, doesn't matter. It handles it all. Decent speed, decent pickup. Whether you decide to use a pedal assist and pedal or throttle alone, like right now I'm getting tired. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put it on throttle only. <laughs> I need a break. I haven't ridden an e-bike in a while. So, forgive me. She's definitely slowing down. This is another big hill. So, if you're in a, a place that has some pretty steep hills like we do right here, um, be prepared to do a little bit of pedaling, guys. Uh, as long as you don't mind pedaling, you'll be all right. But it makes it up the hill, it just does it slow. You know what I mean? Going up some of these bigger hills, it'll do it, but you end up doing 10 miles an hour. Another good curve here. Just very smooth overall bike. I love it. And for, again, $799, this is gonna be hard to beat. All right, so we finally hit the five mile mark on the awesome Tom rv3 bike and it's time to see how the battery is holding up after that ride now it's important to understand a few things number one there's a lot of big hills out here we did a lot of it on gravel and i used mostly the throttle and very little pedaling so i don't expect a whole lot out of the battery on this one guys uh, we really put it to work today if you can see here it shows five miles that top number is how many miles and then fifth pedal assist is level we were in 
And the battery, it's probably a little hard to see there, but it's got one, two, three, four out of five bars. So 20% was used to go five miles. So if you figure that up, five miles per 20%, You've got 25 miles and the advertised range is 30 so it is right on the money especially considering like i said it is cold you can see there's no sunlight i have a coat on because it is literally cold out here today so these are pretty much the worst case conditions for this bike and it did extremely well i'm very happy with it and i'm happy to promote it on the channel if this is something you would be interested in i highly recommend you go check it out i'll put a link directly below this video for you guys like i said 799 dollars for an entry-level e-bike that is built anything but like an entry-level e-bike. It's a sturdy bike. It has no problems getting me where I need to go, uphill, downhill, in the dirt, in the mud, in the sand. It handled everything with ease. So go check them out. Thank you to Awesome Tom for sending me their RV3. Stay safe out there, everybody. We'll see you all again very soon in the next one.